We know COVID can sometimes spread among family members, sharing space in the same households, but the symptoms aren't always equal. And a recent Stanford study reveals why young children generally, generally, have milder COVID symptoms than adults. Joining me now to shed some light on this is Dr. Bali Pulendran. He's a professor of microbiology and immunology at Stanford. Thank you so much for joining us. First, can you tell us a little bit about the overall findings in this study? Yeah, thank you for having me. What we showed in the study uh, was that young children, who we all know tend to develop much less severe symptoms in response to COVID infection, had a very distinctive style of immune response to this infection, which is quite different from what's been observed in adults with COVID infection. And we were able to show this using what we describe as a systems immunology approach that takes a comprehensive picture of the immune response to this infection by analyzing blood samples collected from babies or nasal wash samples collected from the noses of babies to evaluate the immune response, not only systemically in the blood, but also in mucosal tissues. So how do these findings potentially impact getting vaccinated for COVID? Does that mean that kids don't have to get vaccinated as much, or does it pretty much stay the same? Yeah. One of the striking features of our results was that babies who developed COVID developed an antibody response to this infection, which was highly durable for 300 plus days after infection. This was an unusual feature of this response because as you know, uh, antibody responses to infections or vaccinations tend to decline with time. Mm -hmm. This wasn't apparent with these infections in these babies. And so what this highlights to us is that there could be uh, mechanisms by which you could train the immune system to give you more durable antibody responses. I should emphasize, however, uh, these findings should not be extrapolated to vaccines because vaccines, as far as we can tell, do not seem to be inducing highly durable responses. So my advice would be uh, that people should get the vaccine uh, as uh, uh, when, when the new uh, updates arrive. I remember when my kids were, you know, young, especially starting preschool, and it felt like they were always fighting something. They always had some kind of cold, some kind of little sniffle, maybe a little bit of cough, and you, the parents would usually get it too. And I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, the theory was because these kids were always fighting something, some little bug, because their immune systems are developing, that was, and because their immune systems were so strong from fighting a bug almost constantly, that played a part in them not developing as severe COVID. COVID. Is that still ring true now, even with this new study? Yes, it is. Because as you say, the developmental stage of an infant's immune system is very different from that of an adult immune system. And of course, infants are constantly exposed to all kinds of benign coronaviruses because they are in nurseries and they're playing and so on. So I think these benign exposures to other viruses may imprint a degree of resistance Uh, that might impact how they respond to COVID. We know that, you know, as as the study found that the majority of children don't develop severe COVID symptoms, but there are some kids that do. What are the risk factors for kids to develop a more serious case of COVID? Yeah. Generally, I think immunodeficient babies or babies born prematurely where the immune system is still at a very nascent stage of development or, for example, uh, babies who have other comorbidities, for example, lung problems, uh, respiratory problems caused by RSV or other allergic symptoms tend to be major important risk factors. However, again, let me emphasize a major risk factor is not to get the COVID vaccine. So pregnant mothers uh, should be vaccinated so that they can transfer some of these maternal antibodies to their babies. And of course, infants uh, from the age of six months onwards Uh, the mothers should make sure that these infants also are vaccinated because numerous studies have proven, shown that unvaccinated babies tend to develop more severe disease than vaccinated ones. All right, Dr. Bali Pulendran with Stanford, thank you so much. Valuable information there. Thank you for having me.